Hi, Sonny. Welcome. Welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate <laughs> the invite. Yeah, I'm really excited to have you on today, especially because I know that you have really gotten into reselling jewelry. So I am I going to start and dive right in because to me, I'm so curious to know like how you got started reselling and then how you got started with jewelry. I started reselling just to start paying bills. When I moved to here in Vegas from Hawaii, I was looking for a job and I couldn't, I couldn't get one fast enough. And my wife ended up getting picked up right away as a nurse. And one of her coworkers, I guess they were talking stories about what they do aside from nursing. And they talked about thrifting. And this was back in 2015, 16. And I had no idea what thrifting was. I was in the military since 99. Um, I got out in 2011. So all I knew was like the military world and the civilian world was new to me. So fast forward from then moving here, my wife was telling me about thrifting and how you can make money off of it. My first question was, what is thrifting? And then <laughs> she started uh, breaking it down. You go to the thrift stores like Savers and Goodwill. I've never heard of these places. And even if somebody mentioned it, I probably had no idea what they were talking about. I just went along with just hearing what they were saying. So right there and then, um, as she's telling me the story, we're driving down Sahara somewhere, uh, some some way downtown. And uh, when she said Goodwill is right across her shoulder or across from her as I'm looking at her from the passenger side. And boom, there's a Goodwill. And I say, like, that Goodwill? And she's like, yeah, that. And I was like, well, can we go inside? You know, the whole point of her telling me was to make money. Um, and I figured, uh, why not? So it was pretty fun. I stepped inside and within a few minutes, I found a little vintage rush troll uh, that had a little T-shirt on it, which usually they don't ha they don't have their actual or original costumes with them. They're just naked, right? Um, and it had happy 60th year anniversary. And I just thought, that's old. I had these when I was in middle school, and you'd only get them if you had A's in math from our teacher named uh, Ms. Marsh. Um, and I would never get one because I sucked at math, but I always wanted one. So this was like, bringing in a lot of memories and nostalgia factor and all these things within reselling my first visit really hooked me in. And it wasn't until really the second day I got my first cha-ching on eBay for that. It sold for, I bought it for 69 cents and it sold for around $20. And after wow. that, I just was yelping everything. I was learning about apps and technology and I was hooked. So from that, I started eating into clothes. At the time here at Goodwill was like a dollar fifty at the time. And now it's like $3.99 in some places. <laughs> so it's prices has gone up. So they used to also have filler bags, which was pretty cool. Um, so I got into clothes, clothes died down, and years coming over, uh rolling over, I started learning about other things. And as I started piling up to your question, how did I get into jewelry? I love reselling apparel but it, it started taking up too much space as much yep. as well as I do reselling it. I wanted something smaller and I started paying attention to uh, Tiffany thrift in Las Vegas, a good friend of mine. And she talked about jewelry for the longest time. I thought Tiffany loved reselling jewelry. So I said, my friend likes to resell it. She does well. Um, <laughs> so I got into jewelry and then we, we ended up thrifting again a few months later after that, or several months later. And I said, you know, I got into jewelry because you like re reselling jewelry. And she said, I don't like reselling jewelry. I just, <laughs> I just know about jewelry and what to look for. And I was like, huh, well, thank you. Either way, you know, <laughs> it, got, it got me into jewelry because it saves us space. It's so small. It's lightweight. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what really got me into it was just trying to find things that are smaller and not take up too much space. And it ended up being like, like a newbie feeling again, which is nice to have to not know something, yes. but want to learn that, that that's something even right now gives me the chills in a good way of there's so much out there that if you just look, you could discover things and learn about yourself. That's going to help you go a long way. Yeah. You know, that's the exact same way I kind of fell into jewelry as well. You know, I started off on eBay in 2007 as an everything seller and then uh, took off for a few years and got back into it and then realized very quickly, because I was doing all the things, vintage glass and handbags and, <laughs> you know, just everything. 
And just like you, uh, I realized very quickly, okay, this isn't going to work because I didn't want to spend money on a storage unit. Um, I, I don't have a big garage or anything like that. So I said, jewelry is something that I, I actually like and I'm curious about. And I said, that totally could work. So it's kind of practical as well as yeah. a love for it. <laughs> yeah, things are beautiful. And I'm an artist as well. So when I, I look at things, I don't necessarily look at what the price monetary value is. I look at the artistry and that's a different value for me. So to me, it's it's a bonus. Even when you find things that you think aren't worth it or realize they're not worth it, uh, learning keywords, uh, different type of jargon from jewelry to clothing, that it's like, oh, it wasn't worth getting, but lesson learned. But it did help me find other things through that process of researching that I should be looking for. Yeah. So how do you, I guess that would be my next question. How did you start studying and learning and researching jewelry? Like, were you interested in a specific type or was it just whatever you found? Like, how did you figure it out? I started looking uh, rather than just looking at silver and gold because that's a little harder. Mm -hmm. um, and when you find it, usually there's a marking on it. Uh, when it comes to gold and silver and then it comes down to what i've learned of just like typing in things online and watching people's um youtube videos that's a big one it's a big plus you could type in types of silver different types of silver fake silver fake gold and there's so much people out there but i think the first person i think about that i was actually looking at i think it's the rusty jeweler uh it's oh, one yes. of a few uh, one of a few guys that I see out there that are actually sharing valuable information free at your fingertips um, that I dived into. And I was like, wow. And just his knowledge and how he talks, it was very comfortable and easy for me to listen to. And he's also visual. He shows his stuff. There are people out there, not a bag on them, but there's people out there that talk about things, but they're not showing. So I'm, I'm more of a visual learner and he is one channel that works very well for me. And that's also things that I learned too, as well. It's not just me learning. It's how do I share that in return to fill in the gaps of people wanting to learn, even if they don't think they want to. But if I show that I have this little bitty brooch, right? Like, oh, I got it for a dollar and it looks like it's maybe worth a dollar. And then you see a highlight of what it actually sells for. Then that opens your eyes. Um, so just, just finding something. I think for me, the past few months has really, uh, my perspective of learning has been, I know this item may not be worth picking up, but it's going to help me discover things that are, like I said earlier. And I, I've been able, uh, fortunately now compared to when I first started, could not afford to even do that. I could not afford to lose $2 or even $5 to chance anything. So it was a lot more harder but now I'm a little bit more lenient and comfortable financially and uh, relationship wise. Cause that's the one thing when you have struggles with finances, you bump heads with your loved one. Right. So I'm glad I'm far away from that. And everything has really been a life learning experience, uh, bringing it from what I started out in the military and then being broke and then finding that this information out there, that's just waiting for me to type in can help me a lot. And it has, and I just try to, throw it all back to people. So jewelry is fun. I think it's like us. You don't know what it's worth until you invest in it. You know, and that's what I think about people as well. Not that I'm going to sell people or anything, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's a very sweet, a sweet way to put it, you know, because uh, I, I've been down that same road with you where, you know, I couldn't afford to, to buy junk, you know, <laughs> because. Yeah. Because I needed it to sell, you know, but then also not having the knowledge right away and guessing, is this good? Is this junk? Is is this kind of good? You know, and I think um, everybody who starts starts down this this road kind of goes through that same thing. So where do you source jewelry? And you don't have to give specifics, you know, just as there, much as you there, like it's, I It's... Uh. I'm kind of limited to where I go to. Like I do that to myself. So it's very easy to answer that. It's the flea market. Yeah. I have been going there for around a year and I've been learning to meet and get to know vendors rather than, Hey, I'm just another person on the other side and you're just 
a person on that side, somewhere along the way, it dawned on me that I should be paying more attention and investing a friendship with the person on the other side that is bringing things forward for me to get mm. rather than there's just items on the table and that's it. You're cutting yourself short. So I've learned that way. And I've, I've had, I guess, just my attitude of people liking me, uh, almost everybody, that the vendors, I will see them with a lot of people and they're going through everything. People are digging for stuff and everything's nice. And then I go and a vendor will be like, hey, welcome back. Um, I saved this for you. And it's like a box of jewelry. And I'm like, how much? And they're like 40 bucks. And I'm like, I'm going to make like maybe a thousand bucks off of this. <laughs> yeah. You know, from $3 items that sell to $15 or more. And I'm just like, wow, like why? I don't ask them, you know, it's one of those things you don't want to question. But I ask myself like, why? But then I tell myself like, that has to say something about me for somebody to even think about me. Cause I could have never showed up, you know, I could just stop going to the flea market, but they held yeah. on to this for who knows how long and just offered it to me. So I just try to learn to be a better person and know that if I'm okay with things, things are great. And if something comes back, it's just a surprise and not expected. Yeah, that's so true. Uh, relationship building is a big part of this and, and not just jewelry, just reselling mm -hmm. <laughs> or even just business, right? You know, it's all about uh, building that connection and establishing trust and being consistent. All those things are really important when it comes to everything, really. Yeah, it, it's quality control. And you could take what you just said um, and use that towards jewelry. The better the jewelry is, you're going to trust that it's not going to fall apart. It's mm -hmm. going to have amazing colors and qual uh, quality you know, and it just presents itself in a way that really gives it value. And people like jewelry, they have stories to them that haven't been told yet or it reflects on something, a new story that somebody could uh, reminisce on. And I love that I get those type of, type of comments from people to say, oh, I had that from my childhood or, or my grandma had that or my uncle. Because it's not just men, there's women there too. And I've been really trying to dig into what do men have? <laughs> Which isn't very much compared to <laughs> ju uh, jewelry for women. A lot less for men. A lot less. Yeah, I was just reading the um, statistics about uh, jewelry selling, the data that came out for 2023. And they said that 73% of all jewelry purchases were made by women between the ages of 23 and 54. Yeah. And I just thought that was so... Well, I mean, I, I wasn't surprised, but because almost all of my customers are women. And so just to see the data kind of confirm like, yeah, it's mostly women who are buying jewelry either for themselves or for gifts that. Uh, but the way the data flipped was when it came to engagement rings, 80 percent of people buying engagement rings were men. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's the only part of the jewelry buying where the men dominate. But every other part of buying jewelry, it's dominated by women. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. I was just like, oh, okay. So what is your favorite type of jewelry to source and to sell? I like more of necklaces because mm -hmm. rings are a little harder. A lot of people want more of silver, um, which I see a lot of silver out there. But they're not all the same. They're unique and different in their own way. Um, but I like necklaces. I like learning but even like one I'm looking at right now across from me, it's a Monet necklace. And a lot of people are like, oh, you have a Monet necklace or a bracelet, you know, and you really don't brand. see too much other than necklaces. But I, I've come across picture frames of Monet and people are like, well, that's unique. And that just little difference of something that's not in the ordinary brings value. And majority of my customers when it comes to jewelry are women. But since I've been talking about and I've learned this on social media is that if you want to try to promote something like selling something, say things like I'm trying to find out more about men's stuff, you know, or are there any women out there who buy for their husbands or, you know, boyfriend or whoever. And it makes them start wondering like, oh, OK, I, I was always shopping for myself, but Sonny showed this and now he has me thinking about somebody. Now I'm interested. 
And it's actually helped me sell a lot more men's stuff that women were buying. And mm -hmm. it, men would trinkle in on it, which one of my first whatnot sales of jewelry, one of my first handful of sales of jewelry had men coming in asking, do you have any more of like uh, cufflings or um, little pins? Uh, I know first, they like, the, uh, like the tie clips and stuff. Yeah. The tie clips. At first, I thought they were like single earrings that were missing the backing. <laughs> I didn't know any better. This was when I was, I'm still new to it. I don't know a lot, but a little bit could help you get a long ways. So that was helping me. And it's cool that the community as well will tell you, you know, if you're open to learning, they will educate you in your comments or yes, on YouTube will. or wherever you're posting. You know, as long as you, for me, I like to make it known that I'm not perfect but this is the words that I have for this item. But I'm sure somebody, a handful or even dozens of people are going to jump in and say, this is how you say it. You know, and each and every one could say their own thing and they all bring different value to help you. Um, there, there's never one way. And I find a lot of the comments like that help me out a lot because Amethyst would be one. Um, just the stone, stone itself, you would say, you know, you want some a purity uh, type of, I guess, stone. Um, and amethyst isn't pure, like it has imperfections. If you're looking at it, I'm like, oh, I would have thought that it was bad to have imperfections. And then you learn these little things and you start thinking about like that something doesn't match for everything. Like <laughs> yes. it has its own uniqueness that I'm still trying to get down. Yeah. And I've learned a lot too, because people have corrected me and this was probably about a year ago. I was trying to figure out the difference between CZ, cubic zirconia, and rhinestones, like how you can tell just by looking at it. Mm. So I, a lady told me years ago, and I, I share that as much as I can because a lot of people are so blown away. And just little things like that where you don't think that it's going to make a difference or that anybody cares or that nobody's interested. Like it's just random things like that, mm -hmm. that really kind of help you as it relates to selling jewelry, because it just makes you more knowledgeable. People trust you. And then, you know, they get the, I guess the perception like, okay, she really knows what she's talking about, or he knows what he's talking yeah. about. So I think being willing to share the information, like you said, freely and not think that you have to you know, keep it a secret or whatever like that. I think that really helps as it relates to building trust, even being a reseller, like, you know, doing the live shows. Trust goes too. a long way to, with the reseller. If, if, if you're wrong, you have to own it and you have to make it clear to the public, especially those who are following you. So when I get corrected, uh, and this isn't jewelry, but it was a t-shirt that I had of uh Prince, a uh, purple rain t-shirt. I didn't see the tag on it and I, I thought it was vintage and I said, I should get at least 30 for this. And somebody left a comment saying, Hey, I know that t-shirt is, they actually sell it at Walmart. So it, I went rather than just say, no, you're wrong. Um, I didn't think that way. Anyways, I just looked, I followed up with what they said and I put up Prince um, purple rain Walmart t-shirt. And sure enough, it showed the tag up like a heat press tag on, on the back and when I looked at my T-shirt again, I just now I was able to see that it just faded and they were correct. So I went in my community tab and showed the photo compared to two saying, hey, I got corrected on there and thank you yeah, um, and showed them that I was wrong and they were right. And it's OK to be wrong and let people know you're wrong as long as you're being truthful. And when it comes to jewelry, that's one thing that people really uh, can get. They can ruin it for themselves if yeah. they say something's real and then you stick by your guns without like saying, okay, well, what do you do if something's not real or something's flawed? Hey, return it back. I'll give you a refund. Let, let me do some research, you know? And even if you get the item back and you get somebody to uh, somebody who's qualified to appraise it for you and it comes back that they're wrong and you're right, you don't have to go back and say like, you're wrong, you know, and beat them up. You just keep that information to yourself and put out there how to check this and how they could check it themselves or who to look for. Cause we don't have the, all the answers for stuff. Right. Right. 
Now, you bring up another good point, too, because I know you have really used social media as, as it relates to, you know, building your brand and building a customer base. So let's talk about that. So how does social media play a role in your reselling business and if it affects you selling jewelry? I think it's a combination of things from people enjoying who I am and the more I feel comfortable and learn and just be myself. I think people navigate to it because there are people out there. When I first started, for example, myself, I didn't know how to be any other way on YouTube than to be like the people that I was watching. And my wife was the first critic. I had her review my video. And within two minutes, she was like, that's not you. That's not the way you talk. And I was like, well, but that's how they do it on YouTube. I don't know any other way, you know, <laughs> right. so it stayed stuck on my head about learning how to be myself because again i was in the military and then becoming a civilian it, it's not easy you come off looking a certain way and sounding a certain way not knowing any better but i wanted to be different and just be comfortable so i started learning about myself and i think as i started growing and learning things and sharing that people saw that i wasn't trying to get over on anybody nor am i ever trying to get over on anybody i'm just trying to enjoy myself and share my journey so through that i was looking at youtube only knowing that when I recorded myself, I would be able to hear myself and hear my buzzwords, my bad habits to help me just talk better. So it was really just reevaluating myself every time. Little did I know that what I was doing would end up leading to where I am today from just needing to pay the bills with both hands pressed together, not having a job and reselling coming along as like just has been a savior in a way of investing in myself and knowing that there's a lot more people like me out there. And I, I think just, just be yourself. That's the best way you could be. If you're an a-hole, be an a-hole. You know, <laughs> if, when you change by being one person and not the next day, then you confuse people and it doesn't seem genuine, you know, um, unless that's just the way you are. But in time, people tell who you are and how you are on YouTube. Um, especially when they run into you in person, they will know if that's who you are on and off camera. Yeah. And you and I are both in Las Vegas. And so the reseller mm -hmm. community here in Las Vegas, we <laughs> it's very small. It's 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 hard not to cross paths with somebody at some point at, you know, during thrifting or events or whatever. And uh, I think I think that's that's part of of it, too, is just having a community or being being kind of connected with other people who are doing the same thing, who understand the struggles and then really support, you know, supporting each other in what we do, because it's not easy. I mean, it can it's be not. fun, <laughs> but it's, it's not. not easy. I, re I remember the first time, the first day you and I meeting and that weekend of the trash to cash, yes. you know, it, was, it was a little much for you. And I was like, I, I see it. And you had told me about it. And, you know, anxiety happens. That used to happen to me when I got out the military being around crowds and PTSD. So I was able to relate and fast forward from what a year ago, maybe a little bit more than a year ago. Yeah. I think it was a year to now. I see you a lot more comfortable around people, especially in reseller groups. I see you flowing and talking unlike before where you're kind of you're back against the wall and protecting yourself <laughs> and looking for an exit to leave. I used to be that way. And I, I that's, that's part of this community that I really like that you get to grow in it and grow, grow within your own self and not have to be anybody else but yourself. And it'll teach you a lot if you put yourself out there. Yeah. I think that's, that's a lot to learn though, you know, because it there's, is. there's the whole confidence of, you know, being a reseller just in general without all the other stuff you have to deal with. Like, cause we all have our own habits, our own personalities, like you said, our own quirks. And so I think that, you can make reselling as social or as unsocial <laughs> as yeah. as you want it to be, you know, because you don't have to necessarily uh, see anybody or talk to anybody to make sales. I have a friend who's or show your face. Yeah, I have a friend who is uh, she's a very successful jewelry reseller. And she says, the reason why I love selling jewelry on eBay is because I don't have to talk to anybody or see anybody to do it. <laughs> Yeah, that's what got me into reselling full time was 
working for the wind casino, working as armed security and dealing with people and take on the mask, take off the mask. It was a headache policies, you know, and seeing people being told it's okay that they could take it off is like, that's not fair. I didn't like, I, I'm a Libra. So I love to be fair. It has to be across the board. Right. right? And I really hated that some people got away with stuff. So I was like, man, I am really tired of this. I am tired of the people that are bad. I love the people that are great or just the, to themselves. And that right there was like, I'm going to do this full time. I don't have to deal with people. I can control that factor now. <laughs> and that has been a, a big, big relief to just have more time for myself and be home. And I love that part of reselling. And and not just reselling, just being an entrepreneur. Because this yeah. goes for anybody. It doesn't have to be a thrift or reseller. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. And um, it seems too like, at least here in Las Vegas, you know, I think people are becoming more comfortable with with each other and people share a lot, you know, like, um, like you, you've been so generous with your information, your time. And, um, it, it's just, it's just amazing how, how much I think we have grown as a community here. And that's just in general. I mean, not jewelry specific. I yeah. mean, yeah, I, I love Vegas and to, we weren't even supposed to be here that long. I think we were giving ourselves a year before we moved to Washington. Um, and then, I think rent went up one at this apartment we had before moving into our first home right now. Um, I think rent went up within six months for the second time, right? And my wife wow. said, oh. I was like, here it comes. We're going to move. And I, I, I was so focused or because my wife wanted to move to Washington for whatever reason. Um, and I thought, don't put up any posters or anything on the wall, no pictures, because this isn't home. You know, right. this is just temporary. So when she said, let's go look for a house, I said, all right, are we going to get a U-Haul for what we have? She was like, yeah, when, when we move to the house, we'll get a U-Haul. And I was like, well, when are we going to leave the Washington? She said, we're not going to Washington. We're going to stay here. And I was like, oh, this is so good. And that's when <laughs> really things in 2018, things started changing a lot for me. I was still working at the wind, but um, things started changing a lot for me, seeing what reselling does. It was doing more than just paying the bills. I was getting a lot of freedom. Um, from investing time into myself and believing in myself and learning to where I, I just, I started going just all in. It's like, what else could I do? Like I, I, I was only looking at it temporarily and I was going to work. And then I saw that I was doing more, making more from reselling than I, and within hours compared to two weeks that I would, I would take to get paid from a job. Yes. Um, and I would, <laughs> The first time I'll say this quick story. It was a Friday. It was my Friday. I was at the best position to get out of work the fastest. And my supervisor calls on the radio and said, Hey, anybody want an early out? I couldn't pick up the phone any faster. <laughs> I was one of a few people that had a phone. I pick up the phone and and this guy's just like, Are you serious? Like you have the best spot. Like you don't mess with anybody. And I was like, I just got to get out of here. I met you to go thrift. So he was like, all right, you got it. You're the first one. Within 15 minutes, I go to Goodwill on Maryland, down Sands. I see this hat that looked like uh, Pharrell Williams hat. So it's a big brown hat, you know, um, and it was $14. I, I touched it and it was like, oh, like this magical <laughs> shine. That's, is that over. like the fedora? Is is that what it's it, called? Yes, almost. So I, I turn it over. And I'm like, this is felt or beaver or something. <laughs> and it said, uh, Ebert, Ebert Roberts, Robert Ebbets. So I don't, I forget the name, but this hat, I ended up selling it for $375 <gasps> within 30 minutes of listing it. This hat was the hat that inspired the, what's that? What's the movie? Indiana Jones, his hat. So that hat was the same make and model of that. So it was very popular. And the wow. guy had asked me a message like, hey, I'll buy this, but can you take $50 off? I'm like, I just bought it for 14 bucks. You know, I just <laughs> made now several hundred dollars in less than 30 minutes. So I go back on Monday to work and the supervisor's there waiting for me in the hallway. And he was like, dude, seriously, he has his arm crossed. Like, are you serious? Like, he was must have been thinking about this all week. And he was like, you got <laughs> off that early? And I was like, showed him my, my eBay. And he was like, 
that's more that's more than what you make in a week and i was just like exactly and he was You're like, like yes you know when you, <laughs> let me know when you want to get off again i was like no that's not fair you know the people got to call themselves but i think people started an understanding at work because i wouldn't tell people at work what I would do. I didn't want people to judge me or to be like, you think you're better than us. Cause people think that way when you do a little bit yeah. more, I, I was just focused on me and I kept it a secret for years until actual, I started making actual friends and not just coworkers um, that they were like, let me have your Facebook. Like, let me follow you on Instagram. I see you on Instagram. I'm on Instagram and I'll show them. They're like, Oh dude, what are you doing? Like, why are you here? <laughs> and I was like, that's myself that every day. <laughs> Yes, yes. So uh, you mentioned something earlier that I wanted to talk about, too, is uh, you're selling on whatnot and just doing live shows, live selling. Let's talk about that. Um, how did you start doing that? And then how is it now as it relates to selling jewelry? Ooh, or whatever a lot, a lot easier because I've been going from apparel and as I learned about apparel, I started learning about different categories in apparel other than T-shirts. I got in the pants. I got in shoes. And I started getting in sporting goods. So as I learned something, I just keep putting it all in the bag. And I'll learn about something else. And I'll share that in my content. I want to start learning about this. But I'm still learning about everything else. I have a, I have a natural hunger for it. So when I started getting on whatnot, I think it was Tim over the years. One of the first ones, him and Cernot Connections, Chris. They were telling everybody on Instagram, you need to get on this. Like, this is the next big thing. And I was like, all right. I opened the app. I was like, I don't get it. You know, I'm, I'm really a caveman in a lot of bad <laughs> habits in a lot of bad ways. So it takes a lot for me to change. Um, then after a while, like a year, I was like, okay, I'll jump on that. They're doing amazing. And I think what got me was when they started announcing, or I finally caught ear of when you make a thousand sales, then you get automatic payouts. And I was like, that would oh, be really, nice. that would be really nice. Who the faster you could get paid, the better, right? Um, so that really got me motivated to do it. And that's probably been three years ago. Um, I had a gap. It wasn't until a year and a half ago I jumped back in and I said, okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna figure it out. I my first three cells were horrible. I think I had like uh one cell. After my third show, all the other ones were crickets. I don't know if I was doing something wrong. People That's were talking. How mine are. <laughs> people were talking in the chat, so I wasn't sure of like, is it my connection or? I, I had no idea what I was doing wrong, and I just kept thinking, don't give up, um, don't give up. If other people could do it, I could do it too. I'm not trying to be better than anybody. I, I'm doing this for myself, and little by little, I started thinking about my whatnot. And saying, why am I not promoting it from YouTube? Because I am more active on YouTube, you know? And then why am I not doing it on Instagram? I'm on Facebook. Why am I not telling people about it? Do not be ashamed of promoting yourself. People who want to follow you or look into what you're doing, whether they say something or not, they're going to go and look. And little by little, those eyes start getting attention. It starts gaining interest. And I've been fortunate enough to not give up on myself again to have be able to sell apparel, hats, um, jewelry, glass. Like I've been able to dab into all these little things, toys, and change it up and just say, why not? And I, I, I tell myself this all the time in hopes like this comes out to other people. Why not? You know, why not give yourself a chance to try something? You know, it could be a, a total flop, but who cares? You tried. You don't have to say what if, you know, you just don't give up on yourself. You know, and that's very powerful that you say that because I struggle with um, like promoting my whatnot shows or my my Poshmark live shows when I do my jewelry. And then people after the fact, they always say, I didn't know you did a show. If I would have known, I, you know, I would have yeah. I would have gone on and I would have bought something. So I'm glad you say that because we have to really um, understand that it's not like we're bragging, like you said, and we're not trying to show off, but it's business. It's your business. business. <laughs> it's your business. It's yeah. Yeah. So maybe that's why uh, my shows aren't as uh, successful as they could be because I don't promote them. I, I always feel self-conscious about it, but hearing you say that, you know, it's what we got to do, right? I mean, people want to 
they want to know what I, you're I've doing. I've been in those shoes and I still get nervous about it. And I still question myself because I, I just, I'm always in my head and I always think like, oh, am I doing too much? Am I bothering people? I don't want right. to come off You don't want to be scammy. But then you look at other people that you follow that are doing very well and you see them every few seconds, you know, sharing something. And it's the same thing. You know, you, you need to share it for yourself. Even if nobody sees it, if it's out on social media, people who are interested will come, like I said earlier. And that's what you're going for, the people that are interested. But if you don't put yourself out there, nobody's going to see you as much as they could. You know, and you're, you're investing in yourself. Yeah. And that's one of the things I learned too in my previous job when I was a social media manager was like, you think posting 10 times a day means somebody is seeing something 10 times a day, but that's really not how it works. Just because you post something 10 times a day doesn't mean the same people are seeing all 10 posts, <laughs> but we think it is, you know, we think somebody yeah. is oh my gosh, she's posting again. Oh my gosh, I don't want to hear, you know, and that's not it because not everybody is on social media all the time. And then everyone's feed is different. You're not going to show up at the top of everyone's feed. So I'm glad you said you say that because as jewelry resellers, I think that it is a very competitive market. And if we are going to make the sales and we are going to get our customers the pieces that they're looking for, because in this case, uh, I like to specialize in vintage jewelry, and, and that's not like something that's easily available. They can't just go to Walmart or the mall. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to find those specific customers or clients, I need to let them know I have the stuff, <laughs> you know? Yeah, you, you really got to brand yourself. And I would say being on schedule or having a set schedule dates and time, that really does help. And I say that knowing yeah. that I am horrible at it, and, <laughs> but too. I tell people that I don't know sometimes if I want to go on whatnot next week, Tuesday, you know, or something. I, I do my best to have a schedule, but I also let people know, like, I, I have a personal life. I have things going on and it, it may reschedule like 20 times, you know, and it, I think when you're just really just being truthful to people, people will understand and if you have the items, say, on whatnot, it's really good to have photos, you know, to show people what you have and they could start pre-bidding. And then as I'm saying things like that, even if your videos, hey, for those who don't know or on whatnot, I want to come over to my whatnot, I'm going to have a jewelry. So you could start pre-bidding. You know, you could put your max bid that you have available. And that works at times. Some people better than others, but it's information and knowledge of, I didn't know that. Oh, what's a pre-bid? Yeah, oh, I'll go put five dollars. Like it's only at a dollar. You know, I'll put five and they might be in there and somebody might be interested. And that's what you want, at least two people on an auction to have a bidding war. And those are amazing, but they don't always happen. So mm -hmm. pricing your things to what you could afford to sell it as, even at, at the bottom dollar, your business has to make sense for you. Not everybody is willing to sell at a dollar or, or start at a dollar. You know, some people have free shipping or whatnot. I do not do free shipping on anything, but I also try to be reasonable of what I'm selling and knowing that a little bit of profit is okay because I have an abundance of stuff. I'm again, not where I used to be in the past where I need to sell this for this much. Now I'm a little bit more lenient and know that this stuff, I bought it and I need to sell it. I don't need to hold on to it. Yeah. So what is your favorite way to sell jewelry then do you prefer doing live sales or do you like ebay poshmark wherever uh like what's your preferred way to sell jewelry my preferred way is what not when it comes to jewelry i tried on ebay when i first started getting into jewelry which hasn't been long at all um i didn't do good at all no no nothing no it was just it was not even crickets it was just complete silence <laughs> on eBay and Poshmark and and I tried Etsy but for some reason Etsy kept pulling up my actual address. I do not want my actual address showed. I was trying to get my PO right. box. So for that reason I, I was never able to do Etsy. Um just privacy reasons, but I've been better on whatnot and I also know that I think it was like 3 months ago I got rid of Poshmark, Mercari, um, I just wanted to narrow down on my selling platforms. I don't want to have people bouncing around 
everywhere. I try to mm-hmm. keep my whatnot specific to whatnot, what I feel are great whatnot items for me compared to eBay. Um, and then now knickknacks was the, with the crazy lamp lady on oh, her that's platform. that's right. That's right. I I saw your post. Um, you were doing a. I think you were doing a sale, a, a, a show or something. Yeah, it was yesterday. It was really yeah, good. Yeah, I saw it. Was it. Really good. And by myself. So when it comes to me selling, again, I'm in my head all the time. So when I would go on whatnot, if for anybody that's starting out on whatnot, regardless of what you're selling, it doesn't matter. Try, like, try to get with friends and say, let's do a raid for a few weeks. Uh, you go first or I go first, you go next. And then the next week we're going to change the, the, the order, order, right? So it's fair for everybody. So it's great to have that, to have those raid and support, but I also don't want people feeling like I need them or I'm dependent of them. I really want to see how good I could do on my own. So on knickknacks, um, and I am blessed for all the help I could get, right? But I also don't want people to come back at me and say, well, if it wasn't for them, because I've had this said to me before, uh, that I wouldn't be what I, as good as I am if it wasn't for people, right? It's a horrible thing to tell people or hear it uh, towards you. So for that reason was yesterday on knickknacks. Uh, not that anybody on knickknacks has told me that. It's for a totally different reason, but I carry it on in so many different forms of my life to like figure things out on my own. So I went on knickknacks, had it out for a, a week scheduled. And I had up to like 304 people that I remember wow. on knickknacks. All right. I, I've only had that much amount of people for like minutes because I've been raided by larger people. Right. Like uh, Kate's um, follow that bug. Jocelyn herself, uh, the crazy lamp lady, Josh, Harry tornado, uh, like Kevin Commonwealth picker, ADH, Dave, Carrie, like, for some reason, they're like, hey, let's go raid Sunny, you know, and thank you very much for that. <laughs> and it's amazing. But those all have been like really great. But I always want to know and ground myself and humble myself to what can I actually do by myself? You know, whether it's a flop or not, like I need to see it for myself and let people know, do not be afraid and always depend on people. I don't depend on people, but I like to have things be isolated that way to where it's just me and to see the truth. And let people see it. And I was from what I just said on whatnot to knickknacks. I didn't have a raid, and I was still able to have a lot more people for 280 to 304 people for an hour and a half the whole time. And I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. So it's a really good marketplace or platform. Um, I enjoy selling on there. I'm not a huge seller. Only because I've learned that the items that I pick need to be better. Um, yeah. So I try to find more valuable items. And for me, that may be like $15 or $30, uh, depending on what maker's mark or brand. You know, it'd be cool to find a $100 item on jewelry. But I don't find big value jewelry items like that. And to me, that's big. There's some people out there that sell like three, five dollars $500,000 items all the time. Um, but I don't have that uh, yet. It'd be awesome if I yeah, do. Yeah, not not yet. As a matter <laughs> of fact, I was just talking about that. Now that's that's the other thing about reselling jewelry is you can kind of create your own business model as you go. There's people who depend on volume, right? They sell a hundred ten dollar necklaces, or there's the people that can sell one thousand dollar necklace. And either way, you know, you can make it work for you. It's not like you're locked in to one or the other. Uh, but I'm like you, I want to eventually get to that point where I'm selling one item, <laughs> maybe two, mm. and it covers, you know, all of my expenses for the month or, you know, all of my sourcing for the month or whatever. That's my goal. Yeah. Everybody has different goals. And I've been saying this for months is everybody wants to sell as much as they can and make how, how much they want, right? They they have a goal. But what I started looking at, even for myself, um, was... I started looking at my finances and saying, how much money would it take to make a difference? And I found that it was only like $300 for me to just get by in a a little comfortable way. And I thought that was pretty amazing. And I try to tell people that to look at what would really benefit you to make, you know, don't, if if $300 is what would make a huge difference in your life to just, just have that little piece, you know, of financial stability and know that you could do that in an hour, say on whatnot. You could go 
and do that a few more times is really self-motivating and inspiring. And now that $300 was amazing, but now you do it two more or three more times throughout the month, you know, or in the every day back to back, like Captain Nurse Slippers, she could do it like every other day or every day and just kill it, you know, but that's just being determined and focusing on your own goals and aspirations of what makes you happy. Uh, money is makes people happy. It really does. But you need to look at what your goal is. And if you're able to surpass it, even better. You know, yes. that's such a big pat on the back. Now, will it be like that all the time? No, you have your up and downs, which is why I also told people when you have these amazing months or weeks of reselling, save. You never know if you're going to get a return. <laughs> what so happens Because life slaps you in the face, you know, and there are some really hard hardships out there that just makes you want to not do it all, even though you know you need to. So cherish those good times, save from it. And when it slows down, you know that you're taken care of and not worrying because you made all this money and now you figure, I I made this extra money, I'm going to go spend it and reinvest it. And now there's no more buyers because they've already got what they wanted from me and you're finding the same things. Some of the same things are good and then some of the same things are you outsell it. You know, now you sold to everybody. Everybody has that particular item. Yes. They want something different. Yeah, so true. So where are you selling then? You're doing what not, knickknacks, and that's and it? Oh, yeah, and eBay. And, and eBay. Wow. Okay. So see, now you've inspired me because I'm trying to not be so all over the place either. <laughs> I, I think it's good to be all over the place. So... I started out cross posting um, uh, about a year ago. Um, I ended up winning a, I think one month free membership from list perfectly. And I had an item on eBay, uh, a cap baseball cap. Um, I had it on there for $165. I put it on Mercari through the cross listing of list perfectly. And it sold within the first day for $135. And I just thought, Oh, this is great. You know, cross posting is amazing. But it was really me just putting something somewhere else. So what I was trying to figure out for a good year time frame, which is a good amount of time to really look back and see what sold on what platform. And I found that eBay was my number one. Although I've had several hundred dollars sales on Mercari and Poshmark, the time that I was putting into cross posting just to even get those few big sales didn't really make sense for me to keep doing it. So I just cut off all the fat that didn't work for me and just stayed with eBay. And I was already on whatnot. I figured I'll stay there. And while I was doing that, that's when Jocelyn, the crazy lamp lady invited me, said, Hey, I'm starting this marketplace. Do you want to join? And I was like, yeah, (laughs) why not? (laughs) You know, like it's okay to be everywhere, but you really have to look at yourself and on, on what platforms you're doing and tell yourself, is it really working out? You know, doing these posts of this is what's sold on this like Mercario, Parshmark, like that's great. But is it really that great? You know, you have to be honest with yourself. So for me, it's worked out. And I will tell you for the past three months, I haven't been cross posting, but I also see a big difference of what I'm not making by, I also uh, not cross posting and also no promoted ads on eBay. Uh, So I stopped doing that at the same time, just to like go cold turkey on everything to really see how good my items are. And they're good. Don't get me wrong. But these little things do help. So I might start cross listing again, but this is what I want to do. And again, people have to figure out what they want and what works. And, and when something's just not enough, maybe go back to what was working and see again, you know, how to just get better and understand what works and what doesn't. Yeah. And for our listeners who don't know what cross listing is, basically it's, it's posting your item on multiple different platforms, websites, you know, so you can expose your item to a bigger audience. And then when it sells on one platform, you have to either manually take it down off off of all the other platforms, or they do have software available that will supposedly uh, do the delisting for you. So, and Sonny was just talking about one called List Perfectly that he- Yeah, there's seen. several out there. Yeah, there's, there's a few. And supposedly they've gotten better than uh in years past so but i don't cross list uh anything just because i don't know i'm i think i'm too paranoid (laughs) because i don't want the software to mess up i don't want to get a ding i don't want to 
you know, and, uh, but I have been focusing on whatnot and Poshmark lives. Like I've kind of scaled back my eBay because I was feeling like I was doing so much work on eBay and I wasn't seeing the return for what I, the work I was putting in. But then on a live show, it's like instant, right? Like sometimes, I mean, I've had some shows where I sold nothing, but then I've had shows where I've sold out and they're asking me for more. So uh, yeah, you really got to figure out what's working for you, what kind of time and schedule you can commit to, like you said. Um, yeah. And then finding as good as you can, you know, the items to sell. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's different. And as cliche as that is, it, everybody is really uniquely different. You could, you and I could have the same exact items <laughs> True. Have it at the same price, go live at the same time. And it would be a totally different outcome, you know, <laughs> and then you flip it to something like I'm better on eBay. You know, you said that you didn't like eBay too much, that it doesn't work for you as well as an, another platform. Well, well, right now, right now. Right, right. right. That but may I'm change it, next year or different. next month. <laughs> I could try what you're doing and not do great at all, you know, and sometimes that not great could be that you did better than me when you, perspective and comparison, you know, some people I think are looking and comparing themselves to people that they forget they're doing it for themselves. So true. So true. So, uh, Sunny, I guess before we close out, where can people find you? How can they connect with you? How can they buy your stuff? Um, uh, well, I'm on, <laughs> I'm mainly now on eBay. Um, uh, my, my second one's going to be knickknacks, but that is like already up there with eBay. It might just be better. Um, and knickknacks is a really cool platform. Find me on my YouTube channel, Sunny Las Vegas, on Knickknacks, also Sunny Las Vegas. It's and a it's great marketplace to learn from. It? How does she spell Knickknacks? I know it's, she spells it funny. N-I-K-N-A-X. Oh, N-I-K-N-A-X. Okay. Yeah. And and whatnot. I have, uh, I don't know when this video is coming out, but I do have a whatnot on uh, scheduled for Saturday, which is pretty cool because whatnot, uh, one of the whatnot representatives, Jackson, uh, a worker with whatnot, was messaging me today saying, hey, uh, when are you doing another whatnot? I said, I have one scheduled Saturday. He was like, oh, I see it. You need to change. Here's these tips. Like, you need to go and put it on storage storage units and auctions or something. He was like, that'll oh, nice. get you a little bit more people to come in, you know, because it's like almost cross-listing rather than just storage units. So it's kind of cool. And I will, I will say this. Um, if you're able to get with groups like Katie and Vicky, uh, I believe you met them, right? Oh, the yeah. Boss Reseller yeah. Remix. Boss Reseller yeah. Remix. Boss Reseller Remix, Katie and Vicky here in Las Vegas. They have group meetups. Follow them on Facebook. People like that and community little group get togethers, which is not small at the time. It's kind of big, to tell you the truth. But get get with groups, get with people, talk about things, build each other up. If things like groups here in Vegas don't exist in your area, you might be filling in a gap that's needed. And it 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 really is good when you're part of community building. Um, that has helped me come a long way, not just meeting people, but learning about different ways about business, people that are bigger, that understand more, that give me just like these ideas that are, are information that I didn't know about. Um, so it's really good to meet people, especially face to face. I'm, I'm a big social butterfly. And uh, I love people. Yes. And you're so friendly too. So yeah. if you ever see Sonny out and about, you have to say hello because he's so gracious and so friendly. <laughs> yeah. If, if I'm not friendly, it's probably because I'm hangry. I'm just gonna get <laughs> really? I can't imagine you ever being not nice. <laughs> yeah. It has to be rare. Like I said, maybe being hangry. I love food too. <laughs> yeah, folks. All right. Cool. All right. Thank you so much, Sunny. I really appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule to hang out with us today. Uh, thank you. I, I hope uh, to see you in person more often. Um, yeah, I don't know when those... the next event is happening, but hopefully yeah. I'll be there. <laughs> and for those of you who are watching and wanting to learn, don't be afraid to ask questions. Even if your question doesn't come off as being understood, try your best to get your question out and people in the comments, like on YouTube, which is what I love. Other people may see it and may have the same question and be afraid to answer that. 
or even ask and there'll be people out there that will help you out. There's a lot of people out there wanting to help, but you can't get any help if you don't ask for it. So put yourself out there in a good way. Uh, don't be afraid to ask. There's so much information out there. And jewelry is part of it that I wish I would have learned a lot earlier. So it didn't have to take up all of my space with apparel. <laughs> yeah, so true. So true. I know I still have like 2000 pieces that I'm, um, I'm working through, but I plan on selling it all guilty. <laughs> <laughs> I plan on selling it all doing live shows. I'm going to be doing the same thing. So. All right. Thanks again. And uh, I will talk with you soon.